Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and take a look at this quilt behind me. Isn't this gorgeous? This is made with our periwinkle template. Such a quick, easy quilt, but such a great impact and it works great with all fabrics. I've chosen this cool Christmas fabric because I just think it's beautiful. It's made by my friends, me and my sister, and it's just fun. So to make this quilt, you're going to need one packet of 10 inch print squares and one packet of five inch print squares. And we have used Merry and Bright by me and my sister for Moda. For the background, you're going to need three and three quarter yards of fabric. For your border, we used one and a half yards of this cute dot. For your backing, we used five yards of vertical seams or two and a half yards of a 108 wide. For the binding, and I show this because it's the cutest little stripe ever, you're going to need three quarters of a yard of binding. You're also going to need 10 and a half yards of 20 inch wide lightweight interfacing. The tools you need to make this quilt are the Wacky Web Template Small and the Wacky Web Template Mini. These are also called periwinkle templates. So, <laughs> so these are the templates you're going to need to make this quilt. You're going to need the mini periwinkle and you're going to need the small periwinkle. There is a large periwinkle, but it is quite large and we're not using that in this quilt. So this is the block we're talking about right here. This is our periwinkle plate block and it's made with six periwinkle cutouts. And so what I did was I took my layer cake and I divided them up and I put six fabrics that I thought would be fun together. So two reds, a couple of whites, and a couple of greens in the whole stack. So then when I go to cut them out, I'm gonna get four periwinkles out of here. I'm gonna pin these together and they're ready to go. They're ready for me to sew. They have all the different colors in. So I'm not picking one from here and picking one from there. I'm actually just gonna lay them all together and sew them up. So I'm gonna show you how I cut these. And on the back, you know, on the back of our thing is this uh, cardboard sheet on the back of our layer cake. And so I like tried really hard to see if I could get my little ones out of any of the extra space. There's just not really room. So normally when I cut a single periwinkle, I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm gonna fold it in fours like this and I'm gonna set this on it like this and just cut out four. But because I wanna do it in six at a time, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay these out and I'm basically gonna do the same thing but I'm gonna keep these together. I'm gonna to put my uh, periwinkle along the edge. Now these aren't stacked exactly straight and so I'm gonna just come in just a little bit from that edge and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. And to cut six at a time, you know, usually we cut four. It's not that many more, but you will wanna make sure you have a nice sharp rotary blade. And so let me see if I got that all out of there. Oh, I got a little corner right here. But don't cut too far off the corner either because you want to get all your pieces out of it. So then what I'm going to do, oh my goodness, i got trimming everywhere. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pin and I'm just going to stick a pin in this because I know this is going to make a whole plate. I've already got it all together and it makes a whole plate. So then I'm going to come down here and I'll cut another one. And we're just going to cut all four of these and I will have four ready to go. It, doing this, it goes together very quickly. Got to turn that for my left hand. Make sure it's still lined up. There we go, and then I'll grab this one and put a pin in that as well. Might as well stick this thing over here. And then we've got two more here, so I will line this up in here. Let's start in this corner, like this. can move these off. All right. So then the last one, you're going to get out of this last corner and you get the drift. We're just going to cut these out. This makes a whole plate. So let me show you what we do from here. Very little waste on these. But I love that I, you know, that it's all together as a plate. When you cut, you're done, you've picked all your colors, you're ready to go. So then basically what you wanna do, let me put this down here. You're gonna to wanna to lay these out first and then you're gonna sew them together by twos. And so we're gonna put a red here 
and we'll stick this green here, or this white, and then a green, and then a red. And you just want to make, what you're looking for is you just want to make sure that you don't have like colors right next to each other so that it lets all the colors be the star. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew two of these like this, and then I'm going to add the third. So we're going to come here and sew a quarter of an inch down the side. And then just like that, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to add this red over here. And you notice I didn't press it, but I'm going to fold my seam to one side while I sew over it. And then we can take this over to the ironing board and press that. We just want to make sure it's nice and flat and your seams are laying, laying down nice and flat. I'm going, to, I'm going to encourage this center seam to go to the outside right there. But your seams aren't going to nest too much, so you don't, want to have, you don't really have to worry about that. So this right here, we're going to sew these two together. And then we are going to add this last green one over here. And again, I'm just going to lay my seam over and line up these points up here and lay the seam over here. All right, then we're going to press this one. And we're just going to lay it like that, press it down. And these I'm just going to have go to the, well, this one I think I'll go out. So you'll notice when you press seams, sometimes, you know, they, they want to go a certain way because of the bulk of the fabric. And so I rarely fight that, you know. <laughs> if my seam has an opinion, he gets what he wants. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to make sure these are in the right way. We're going to lay them right on top of each other. And we're just going to sew straight across this middle line. And that's going to form our plate. And we're going to just kind of nest up this center seam right here where one seam goes one way, one seam goes the other, and, and your edge. And if you have one piece that's a little bigger than the other one, um, just put that bigger piece on the bottom. But these should be, they should be, because, you know, we're cutting these pieces, they should be pretty close to perfect. All right. So we've sewn that seam right down the center. We'll open it up. We have this cute little plate. And we're going to press that so nice. And I'm just going to lay this over and press it down. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this lightweight fusible interfacing like this. And I am just going to lay this on here like this. And I'm, there's a side that has the sticky bumps and a side that has the smooth bumps. And you want the sticky bumps next to the front of your quilt, like this, the front of your fabric. So sticky bumps to the right side of your fabric. And we're going to put this in here. And I'm just going to try to get it to fit as good as I can. And because the size of this stuff, you can't get two together, but in all these extra places is where we're going to put our small periwinkles. So it won't go to waste. I'm just going to pin this on here like this, just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to take my rotary cutter or a pair of scissors and I'm just going to kind of gently, gently go around it like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around the outside of this, completely uh, sewing it shut. And because we're dealing with long straight sides, this is just, it's just very easy. And you don't have to worry about uh, any little points or anything like that. You know, when I was making this, I was thinking of the Dresden plate and all the little points. And I love a Dresden. But this is like the super easy Dresden. Now I sew to where my needle hits the seam line, and then I'm going to turn and go up the other side. Coming down this side. So here we are back at the beginning. We've completely sewed this thing, enclosed it. And uh, now I'm going to trim this excess off right here. We're just going to go along and trim this. 
I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. And as I'm trimming, I'm going to clip the point. Don't cut into your stitch line, but I'm going to go ahead and clip that point. And if you had very deep curves, this is the, this is the uh, seamstress coming out in me. You can also clip this point right here, just right up to that stitch line. Don't clip your stitch, but right up to that line, and it will help it turn easier. And so you can do that. On this one, I didn't find it was really necessary because the curve is so gentle. So again, I'm just going to cut off this point right here. I want to make sure you can see this. I'm going to cut off this point and just come down this other side, and we're trimming it nice and close or at least even with our quarter inch. Trim this point off and then we're back here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this right side out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of of uh, interfacing and I'm gonna pull it away from my fabric and I'm just gonna cut a little slit in here and then I can stick my scissor in here and just cut a little, a little slice across, being careful not to ever catch your fabric. And now I have a way to turn this. And so then I'm just gonna flip it around like this. And I'm using my finger to go in and grab those points and push them out. And then you'll need a turning tool to get right in there and get those little, little points out. There are lots of great turning tools out there. You can use the purple thing. We have a bamboo uh, thing. You can use a skewer from the kitchen. I think that's what I have right here is my, my shish kebab stick, you know. Anyway, just gently put them through there. I also, you know, because I'm, I live dangerously, I also use my scissors when they're closed <laughs> and gently push that out. It, oh, it, you know, danger, that's living dangerously, but uh, sometimes I do that. But I don't recommend it always. All right, so now I'm going to move this out of the way. Now, in my mind, uh, in my mind, I thought this would fit on a 10-inch square because it came from a 10-inch square, but it does not. It's too big for that. So, um, so uh, your background squares are going to be 14 inches. So I have a 14-inch one cut right here, and we use this cool fabric that has a, whoops, we use this cool fabric that has a snowflake motif on it because I just thought it was so cute with this. Now, to be fair, I have made many of these in red, white, and blue, you know, for 4th of July to hang as a garland, to use as a mug rug, to put on a table with a vase. So these are just a great little project for any, any little thing that you need in any fabric. Don't get stuck on just this one fabric because it can go for any, any little thing you want. You do want to make sure that your little seams here don't have folds, that, that it's all the way rolled out, and you can use your pressing stick to do that. Make sure that it's that whole seam is just pushed nice out and flat. And remember, you can't iron this, because if you press this, it will stick to your iron, because the bumpy part is now on the outside. Now that we've turned it, the bumpy part is on the outside. So I took my 14-inch square, and I folded it in half, and I folded it in half, and I gave it a little press on these lines. So now I have centering lines. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on here. And what I did was I lined up my centering line here and my points on this line right here. And I just made sure that they were about the same top and bottom, you know, so that you can, uh, you can then you can go over and press this on. So make sure that all your points are good. And, and make sure that your little periwinkle plate lays nice and flat. We're going to move this over to the iron, and then we're going to press this down. Now, remember, your, your little glue beads are on the outside now, so this is going to adhere this to the square. It's going to stick to the square. And then, wait a minute, i got a little string I'm going to need to clip. I'm going to get a little scissor here. So just iron it from the front and the back to make sure that it gets a nice, good, uh, firm bond on there. And then what you're going to do is we're going to put a finishing stitch on here to hold it down. So you can use a tiny zigzag. You can use a tiny straight stitch. You can do an um, applique stitch. And you'll see on this one, I did the applique stitch on the edge of mine. You know, and I just used white thread for all of them, regardless of what the fabric was, because I wanted to hide it. Uh, I think it hid very well, but you can see even when it shows up, 
you know, it shows up, it looks fine. So that's what we did. And so what I'm gonna do now, because this machine right here is a straight stitch only, I'm going to swap out machines for one that has some decorative stitches and so I can show you how to stitch this on here. So now you have your block ready and I've got my machine here that does several different uh, de decorative stitches and honestly, this is a fun way to try them out if you wanna try something different. I mean, every star could have a different stitch. Also, don't forget, just like a Dresden, you can hand stitch these down. And so if you wanna do that, that's okay too. I wanted to just do it on the sewing machine and because this is such a nice gentle curve right here, you can actually just sew and, you know, it's not like you're stopping starting. You can do this whole curve, you know, in one fell swoop. So find the stitch you want, get some scrap fabric and stitch with it. So on this machine, you know, if I turn to the number, my number is 23 right here. Um, it comes up with a preset uh, setting. And so if I stitch a little bit, if I don't love that preset setting, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my length and width buttons over here and see if I want, you know, cause I'm doing a, a blanket stitch, which is, it goes stitch, 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 grab, stitch, 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 you know, over like that. And if I don't want that one that long or it's too short or for whatever reason, if you wanna change it up, don't be afraid to change that up. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna sew right along the edge of this curve and my stitch will come over and grab it. Just like that, we're sewing down the side. And because you've um, iron-on applique this to the block, you don't even have to pin it. All right, so then I get to that point and I'm gonna turn it. And you can see how nice this looks. It's very finished and pretty. And so I'm gonna just make sure that my needle's gonna go in the right place. Because I want it like right off the edge of that. Turn again. Make sure we're going right there. I always like to put that needle down to make sure I know where it's going to start and so that it doesn't catch me by surprise. And don't feel like you have to do this swoop in one fell go. You can stop in the middle. It's, you know, you can do whatever you want. Turn and I have this one more side right here. Again, I'm gonna put my needle right in there, the edge of that. Now on this machine, another thing that has that's really nice is that it has a slow down and a speed up. So if you're not comfortable going this fast or if this is your first time doing this kind of thing, just slow those stitches down. And even if you have your pedal to the metal, the sewing machine will only sew so fast. And so then, then you feel a little bit more confident. But by the time you've done the last one of these on your quilts, you're gonna be whizzing through it. I always start on a point, but you could start down in the middle. I mean, you can start anywhere you want. But when I'm, as I'm coming here to this finishing right here, I'm just gonna make sure that, uh, that I overlap my stitches just a little bit so that, um, you know, it's like back stitching a bit. And if you have a locking stitch on your machine, you can use that as well. Uh, and so my little plate is done here. Let me go ahead and clip off these threads and can see how cool this looks. So let's press this nice and flat again. 
Now when you sew these on, it does, you can see it just kind of scooches up that fabric a little bit. But then when you put it together, it just looks so cool. Now, take a look at this. See, you can see very clearly right here these little stitches. So on these big periwinkle stars, you're going to make one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five. So 25 of those. And then you can see I have little ones on here. This is the size of the little periwinkle right here. It's just as cute as it can be. It's done exactly the same way. Six, you're gonna sew three together and three together. Don't be afraid of these because they're just smaller, not harder. Also, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna put it on your, your piece of fleece that's left over on this side. You'll, you can put a couple of the little periwinkles on there sew around the outside, cut a slit, turn them. And when I, what I did, because this quilt is pretty good size, it's 78 by 78, so it's a pretty good size. So once I got my um, blocks made, and I went ahead and sewed them together, and uh, I put four together like this. So one, two, three, four, and then added my little periwinkle to the center. Now you can center this up on all the seams. So your lines are gonna be right there, perfect for centering and I put this little guy right here in the middle. Then I added two more blocks and added another periwinkle. Then two more blocks and added another periwinkle, and then two more blocks and added this last periwinkle over here. And, and that makes it so much easier because if you put your whole quilt together and then add your, your small periwinkles, it's gonna be very cum cumbersome under your machine. It's gonna be a lot of quilt. I mean, it can be done, but it is gonna be a lot of quilt. So then there was enough white on the edge of these blocks that I didn't feel like I needed to add that inner border. So my outer border out here is just a nice big six inch border. And you guys know how I love a diagonal stripe and that makes the binding. And on this Christmas fabric, it just looks like a candy cane. It's so cute. So the back, is this not the cutest back ever? this green and our quilting pattern is a meandering snowflake and it just shows up so pretty on the back and on the front I just love how you just catch a snowflake here and there and it just looks so pretty. Also you'll notice that when you put these plates in all the plates are sitting going up and down the same direction and it forms these cool ovals that just highlight this little periwinkle and so it just makes it really cute. The quilt is 78 by 78, nice big quilt and we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the periwinkle plates from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you are not already part of the Missouri Star Quilt family, you can hit the subscribe button below so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.